How do you find it being a woman doing business in China? Funnily enough, I think doing business in China as a woman is not as difficult as some other countries. Such as? <laughs> Such as maybe, maybe Korea, for example. I remember going to a Korean shipyard once and, uh, and I was very quickly assumed to be the, the assistant and I was asked to go out to get some tea for my father. <laughs> and, um, but I, I guess in China, in a way that there is, in the, in the workplace anyway, there, there is this equality as a woman, um, that, that doesn't mean you can't excel in what you do. You see, that challenges our perception of doing business in China, that it's dominated by old men in suits with strong political connections. But here you are doing business in, in that very modern world right now. Yes, I was never treated differently just because I'm, I'm a woman. I've seen you described as a tigress tycoon. Oh, <laughs> I, I guess your reputation is, is what it is. I mean, I, when, when I go to work, I'm a no-fuss kind of person. I just go straight to the point and yeah, so maybe that's why I'm a tigress. <laughs> your trade with Australia is significant, isn't it? It is. Outbound carriers carry iron ore. Uh, from Australia, of you know, I'm one of the biggest iron ore exports in the world uh, to China. So definitely, Australia is our friend. <laughs> How much of our iron ore are you shipping to China at the moment? Uh, quite quite a bit. I mean, we have right now in our fleet uh, four Cape size bulk carriers, and each each one carries around 180,000 tons per load. That's a lot of iron ore. It is a lot of iron ore, yeah. Can you fill them fast enough? Yeah, we can. I mean, it, I, I must say business has slowed down since 08, since the financial crisis. But yeah, you know, we definitely still cause Australia on a very regular basis. Are you ambitious for China's success? Do you want to see China become the economic superpower of the world? Of course, of course. I mean, as, as a Hong Kong person, you know, we are now part of China. And our success depends very much on China's success as well. And also, you know, ever since I was, I have been in school, you know, the, the American thoughts, the, the, the democracy, you know, and the, the way of life, you know, is very one, one sided. You know, everyone looks at America as the ideal. I'm not saying that it's not an ideal anymore, but, you know, but now China is providing an alternative. And it makes you question about a lot of different fundamentals and the, the, the ideals that we're chasing for so many years. Maybe it's time for an adjustment. A shake-up. A shake-up, exactly. It challenges a lot of people's thinking though, doesn't it? It Having does. China is a superpower. Yeah, sometimes China gets things done because someone decided it needs to get done and it gets done. And of course, you know, there are certain drawbacks to it. I'm not saying there isn't, but there are certain perks to non-democracy, if you call it that way. So communism is good for business because decisions get made. Decisions get made. But does that make it risky for you doing business in China? Because it is such a fine line, isn't it? It is. It can be risky. It can be risky. Um, but in order for China to be recognised, as a superpower, it has to play by the international rule book as well. So, you know, it, it is risky, but at the same time, I think China is very much aware of its reputations on the table as well. But do you worry personally? Because one wrong business deal, one step out of line, can land you in a lot of trouble. Yes. But that's the same for every country, isn't it? But other countries have a much more open judicial process than China. I think China is very much aware that in terms of its legal system, uh, it needs to be fair and open. And I, I think it's just a matter of time before they get it right. And I say that because uh, if China cannot if no foreign investors can't have the confidence to do to doing business in China, then China just growing domestically and by itself can only go so far. As it races toward becoming the world's superpower, we in the West tend to view China as a threat. 
Is that fair? I think when a country like China, with its population as a size, becomes a superpower, it can be a threat to anyone. But if you think about where China has gone through and where it wants to be, I cannot see China being a bully just because it can. Um, ultimately, China has a very big population to protect and uh, still a lot of poor people within that population that needs to help. And I think China has enough problems by itself, not, not problems, but you know, um, achievements that needs to achieve um, for it to meddle in other countries' business, to be honest. If I can ask a personal question, is there time in your busy life for marriage and possibly children? Yes, I mean, that's all in the agenda. <laughs> in the agenda? What, you've got yes. it planned? <laughs> um, I mean, I would very much like to have my own family one day. Uh, I think, for me, life will only be complete when I, when I have that, too, that partner and that family to share it with. Um, so only time will tell when that will happen. <laughs> if I can be rude, you'd be quite a catch. I, I do have a very stable boyfriend, so... I, I hope he knows he's very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> he better. <laughs> Forbes listed you as one of Asia's 15 most powerful people to watch. Yes. Is that flattering or is that unwelcome attention? It is very flattering. Um, but I try not to let it get to my head because I think I can only continue to do what I do. I mean, it, it's, it's all great if people sort of recognize that effort and that success. But at the same time, fame and fortune would not hinder on what I want to achieve in my life. And I know that because, I don't know if you know, but my mother used to be a very famous um, actress in Hong Kong. She was a big movie star. So all my life, I pretty much grew up under the limelight. and having people talk about you for no reason, it just seems very silly to me. So I never try to let what other people say get to me. I mean, it is all flattering to have that recognition, but you know, I just continue to live my life and try not to think about that. That's lovely, thank you, Sabrina. Thank Good you. Good talking to you.